Vulnerabilities are everywhere and the best way to find them is automatically with an advanced scanner. In this video, I'm going to show you three advanced and comprehensive scanners. We're going to cover a wide range of vulnerabilities on many technologies. I'm going to cover Nuclei, a very advanced website, network and CVE scanner. It will scan anything that you can think of to find the most advanced and most relevant vulnerabilities that you can think of. I'm going to also talk about Trivi, a scanner specialized in container images, scanning your file system, scanning a GitHub repo for any vulnerabilities, and Kubernetes. Lastly, I'm going to show you Vaults, which will allow you to scan your machine or any other server remotely for all the vulnerabilities that may be present due to the OS or the packages that you've installed so you can secure yourself and any other server remotely. Through this video, I'm going to show you how to use all those vulnerability scanners. I'm also going to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of each of those scanners. So let's get started. This video is for educational purposes only. The techniques that you see here are meant for penetration testing team and red teaming activities. Do not apply them anywhere where you do not have explicit access from the owners of that service. Nuclei is a template-based scanner. It offers scanning for a variety of protocols like TCB, DNS, HTTP, and SSL. It can also perform scans on web sockets. Now, the main power of Nuclei is the fact that it uses a template to perform any type of scan, which will allow you to automate your security search and search for any type of vulnerability that you can think of, as long as you can fit it into a template. Installing Nuclei is very simple. All you have to do is run this go install, and if you're running on Kali Linux, it's easily accessible using sudo apt install nuclei. Once you finish the install, you can type nuclei in the command line to check that it's working. So whatever it is you would like to scan, nuclei will cover it for you as long as you can come up with a template for that vulnerability. But luckily you do not need to create those templates yourself. The community has done tremendous efforts to cover almost every vulnerability that you can think of. Let's take a look at the templates that the community has developed. So for example, the first thing that we see over here is the CVEs. Uh, they are listed per year, and if you click on any of those folders, you will be able to see the CVEs for that specific year. Let's take a look at one of those CVEs. Well, for example, this is a CVE that covers information disclosure, and it's basically available in CGI bin, which will export all the settings and it covers DNS settings and other sensitive information. Now, the cool thing is that you can see the CVE ID over here and what kind of terms goes into the search for this kind of vulnerability. Now, let's take a look at another template. For example, this is an Airflow Experimenter ABI vulnerability where all the ABI requests will run without authentication. Now, if you're not familiar with the CVE term, it stands for the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. Uh, this is basically a system to provide reference for publicly known vulnerabilities and it was first developed in the USA by the National Vulnerability Database. Now let's go back. We can also check for default logins. For example, we can see default logins for many famous services, but we can also perform other types of scans. For example, we can scan for misconfiguration in any server. Depending on the type of server, there are templates for that specific server, which is pretty awesome. Uh, vulnerability specialized per service. So for example, we've got here the vulnerabilities for Jenkins, the vulnerabilities for Jira, and the vulnerabilities for Joomla, which is super awesome. Now I'm going to install those templates over here, which means that now we can actually use them with uh, Nuclei. However, since we're going to scan the internet, I wouldn't do that directly on my computer. I would first start Tor and pipe all my uh, traffic through proxy chains so it will go first through, Tor, through the Tor network before it goes on the internet. This is a very good way to hide your IP address and make sure that you stay anonymous while you search for anything on the internet. Now, the first uh, command that you see is over here is proxy chains. And then we use nuclei, we pass it the URL that we would like to scan. And then we use the minus T to pass it the template. Now I'm going to choose one of the templates from uh, the nuclei templates that we just downloaded from Git. We can see we've got basically all the options that we saw over there on the Git repository. I'm going to start from the technologies. This will run a scan for all the technologies that are being used on this website. For example, we see over here that the scan has found um, on this test PHP vulnerability website, Nginx Generic, Dreamweaver, Nginx, and BHP are all in use 
this is an important stepping point for finding vulnerabilities specifically for those kind of services. Because now, for example, you know the version of Nginx that's being used on this website. Now, the other super cool feature that you can use with Nuclei is scanning multiple websites at the same time. All you have to do is put those websites into a, a TXT file. Then you can use this TXT file by passing the minus L flag and deciding the templates that you would like to use. So I'm going to scan all those websites to list the technologies that are being used on them. And we can see that we're getting the information for each website. For example, we're using micro, uh, Angular on this website. We're using Microsoft ASP on this one. So this opens up so much information for us. Now, we can also scan for other types of stuff. So for example, we can scan for misconfigurations on all those servers. Now, this will take a bit more time than the other scan because it's not as easy to spot misconfiguration. For example, we found over here an ASPX debug mode is available using this URL on this testaspnet vulnerability website. And now it spits so many vulnerabilities. Look at that. We've got this cross origin embedded policy on this URL. We've got permission policies, misconfiguration. We've got access control allow methods. So much stuff experimented cross domain. I can't believe that it can find so many misconfigurations on those websites. I know they are made vulnerable, like we're only scanning vulnerable websites. So we can actually show the power of this uh, scanner, but the fact that it can find so many of them is already super amazing. Now let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of Nuclei. First, the advantages. It has an amazing community support with all those templates that we saw. This is some super awesome work. Uh, scan that will go beyond the typical vulnerabilities that you can see on in other scanners. And the fact that it has many things to scan makes it super awesome. You can scan networks, you, get, you can scan DNS, web services, and many other things. It's super easy to set up and super easy to use, as we saw. Now, the disadvantages of Nuclei that I've encountered uh, using is the fact that it does not cover the typical vulnerabilities. For example, we didn't see any blind SQL injections. Uh, they, there are templates for it, but it doesn't cover it as much in, in depth as what we see, for example, with other tools like OS. Authentication is also not super intuitive to add. So, if, for example, if you needed cookies, or uh, a certain type of SSH access, it's not as it's not very intuitive and you cannot find it that easily, but there is, I'm pretty sure it is possible through the templates to do this kind of authentication. Number two, Trivi, a very advanced comprehensive scanner. So the cool thing about Trivi is the targets that it covers. So we can scan container images, we can scan the file system, we can scan Git repositories, both remotely, so on GitHub or locally, we can scan Kubernetes clusters. The scanner will look for OS packages and software dependencies, so any problems related to the software that you've installed on the server or on your local machine. It will scan for the known vulnerabilities because it has a connection to a database full of vulnerabilities and any kind of misconfigurations and sensitive information and secrets that are embedded into those services. Installing Trivi is super simple on Reno and Synthes sudo yum and Trivi on Debian and Ubuntu sudo apt git, install Trivi. However, that didn't work for me, so I had to use this wget and download Trivi from its GitHub repository, and then simply debackage it and install it, and then it ran immediately. So for example, I started by running uh, a scan on this container image of Python, and we can see that it managed to spit so many vulnerabilities in seconds. Now, the main issue is that those vulnerabilities are a bit hard to read. We can see that the, for each vulnerability, we see a small description of it, how critical it is, and maybe how it could be exploited. We can filter the results by deciding which severity we would like to use. I would strongly suggest that you filter for high and, criti and critical vulnerabilities, so you can focus on those instead of looking at everything at the same time. Those are usually very serious issues like segmentation faults, uh, faults in SSL check, uh, any problems with the certificates that you can find in this container, uh, an out-of-bounds write, for example, which could allow you to read and write into the memory. If you're having an issue reading the information on any CVE, you can simply use its ID and Google that ID to get more information about it. You probably get a result from the National Vulnerability Database, like this one, and then you will see a full description. Now we can also scan the file system. For example, I'm going to scan this um, GitHub repository that we just downloaded of the Nuclei templates. However, that does not have any vulnerabilities because it's just made lean. So instead, I'm going to run a scan on this GitHub repo that I know contains 
many vulnerable software and outdated packages. So let's try it out. It found so many things in this Git repo. For example, there's certification problem that you can do arbitrary command execution using this Python object command. And you also get the, the vulnerability number. You can do command execution on this BYML through Python object apply. So for the advantages, it has a wide range of things to scan. You can scan containers, you can scan file system, you can scan a GitHub repo, and you can scan Kubernetes. It has a connection to the vulnerabilities database, so you know the information that you're getting is up to date, which is pretty important. It's super easy to install, as we saw, and the setup is almost non-existent. You can use it immediately once you've installed it. Now, the disadvantages for this tool, in my opinion, is the fact that you cannot add your own scans. Configuration is also super minimal. We just provide it with a URL and it will scan it, nothing more. And the reports are kind of hard to read. Like I've tried changing the format, but that just, it's still hard to read. So number three, Vols. Vols is an agentless vulnerability scanner for Linux, FreeBSD, containers, WordPress, programming language libraries, net uh, network devices, it can scan your local machine for any types of vulnerabilities, but it can also scan any server remotely using SSH. Now, its superpower is the fact that it's connected with many vulnerability databases. For example, it's connected to the national vulnerability database that we just saw. It's connected to the same version of the vulnerabilities library from the Japanese. It's connected to the Mitra attack. Mitra is a very detailed resources on the steps that any hacker would take to gain access and perform any type of hacking activities. Uh, it has two types of scan, remote scan mode and a local scan mode. It can also scan with root access and without root access, and it has a server mode. Uh, to run the scanner, all you need to do is to define this config. You have to provide it with the host, the port, and the type of scan that you want to do. I'm going to run a fast root scan, which will scan all the packages using my root privileges. I'm going to be using the dockerized version of uh, vols. We, you can see that we'll have to provide it with the working directory. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to run a conflict test to check if the configurations are working. You can see that the, that the configurations are correct if you see the name of your servers down here. The next step is to run a scan. Once the scan has completed, then you can view the report by typing TUI as an argument to this container. And then you can see a full description of the vulnerability with a lot of references and information about it. The setup was a bit tedious. I couldn't actually get this configuration files to work. So I ended up posting a bug report and uh, developers and contributors to Vols were, were really helpful and actually provided me with an answer that solved my issue. Now, if you want to scan a server, not your local machine, all you have to do is provide the SSH keys and modify the config file to a remote address instead of your local host. Now let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of Vols. The main advantage of Vols over everything is the fact that it has a live connection to all those databases. It is pulling those databases information continuously to make sure that you've got up-to-date scanning. It has many reporting options. For example, I'm going to show you all the flags that you can pass to this report. For example, you can change the result directory. You can send yourself an email with the report, turn it to HTTP, send it over Slack and a lot of other options. You can scan both locally and remotely. Now, the disadvantages of Vols are mainly the setup, in my opinion. It was really complicated. I just kept getting errors everywhere, and whatever I did, it just failed and didn't work. And also, configuring the report was not easy, but I think it's all worth it because it, the fact that it scans for so many vulnerabilities is super good and it covers for all the other flaws that it has. And that was everything I want to talk about for today. Thank you so much for listening. Now, if you've got any other scanners in mind that you would like me to cover, make sure to mention it in the comments. See you next time.